Welcome to Moment for Mission. This is Dr. Fred Foy Strang. I'm glad you're joining me. It seems these days that many of us wear many hats. In other words, we have many demands on our time. Whether it is personal, household, and family responsibilities, or professional business and academic requirements, or church, community, and volunteer work. Sometimes, as I'm trying to accomplish different things, I get interrupted and stopped midstream, and that can cause me frustration and anxiety. Does that sound familiar to you? Today on Moment for Mission, I want to share with you a few things that I've learned about interruptions and how I've found, more often than not, that they can be opportunities to advance my life mission. As we begin, let's take time for a Fred Foy fact. I served King University, a small Presbyterian liberal arts college in the Appalachian Mountains, for a decade. As with most small institutions of this ilk, most people wore many hats in trying to help further the mission of the college. I certainly did. I had a dual appointment as professor of philosophy and religion and professor of mission and intercultural studies. I was the dean of the Peak School of Christian Mission, and I served as the university's chaplain. There was never a dull moment, and as you can imagine, I had to figure out what to do with many so-called interruptions. So, you are interrupted in the middle of what you're doing. Now what? Well, if you go to a bookstore, which are becoming few and far between, you'll find in the business section especially, and some in the self-help section, a number of experts who will tell you how to manage interruptions. I've read several popular authors in these genres. It seems that the gist of the council is based on the premise of efficiency and productivity. These are the currency of value, efficiency, productivity. If you can get more done, you'll succeed. You'll make more money. You'll please your spouse. You'll have the best kids on the block. You'll have the cleanest house in the neighborhood. You'll drive the new car. You'll have a gorgeous body. (laughs) I remember a few of these authors advising to simply sequester yourself, to turn off the phone, to not check any email, to don't engage in social media, to refuse meetings. And if you had to go to a meeting, insist on an agenda and a time frame. Close your door, pretend you're out, say no to every request, all in order to give yourself more time to efficiently get things done. Whether that be in your personal or family life or your business or organization or your academic endeavors or fitness goals, it would focus on what you needed to do. Now, perhaps these business and personal help gurus have information that may be useful for you. Yes, of course, there's value in here, as sometimes things just have to get done. For today, however, I want to come at this from a little different viewpoint. So think about this question. How can an interruption be an opportunity? If you're a regular listener to this Moment for Mission podcast series, then you'll know that I'm a follower of Jesus. In studying his life, I find interesting that most of his teachings, healings, miracles occur within the context of what we might readily deem as interruptions. It seems that Jesus was content to be responsive to the ever-changing world around him and engage those circumstances and people with the good gifts he had such that his mission, demonstrating the kingdom of God on earth, would be furthered. When Jesus was interrupted, he responded with loving kindness. He helped those in need, those nearest to him. Yes, for him there was always that next city, and for us, Maybe it's the next cause or the next job or the next move or the next workout or the next grade or the next event. 
but I suggest that perhaps our greatest mission is simply the person that is right in front of us. One of my favorite spiritual writers, Henry Nowen, put it this way, My whole life, I have been complaining that my work was constantly interrupted until I discovered that my interruptions were my work. Now, I get it. Maybe you're thinking, Fred Foy, this is all well and good for you. You're one of those religious minister, missionary type people. Get real. I have to work and I'm working in the real world. Well, let me give you an example from the real world, how an interruption was an opportunity, or rather the refusal to be interrupted turned into a missed opportunity. I have a friend who had a very successful career as a boat salesman, but he always regretted one sale that he was unable to make. Well, uh, the word boat is quite the wrong word. You see, he sold yachts and really big ones, those ones with a seven-figure price tag. If you follow boating, you'll likely have heard of the Miami Boat Show. It is the place to see and be seen. Now, my buddy was brokering a huge vessel at the Miami Boat Show one year. He was discussing it with a potential client, a nicely dressed, beautiful couple who seemed to be saying all the right things about a potential purchase. Then a squirrely looking fella in shorts, flip flops, and a tacky Florida floral shirt who had looked all around the the boat for a while wanted to talk about taking it out for a sea trial. My friend said that even though he had concluded his conversation with the fancy couple, he felt that that guy was just interrupting him and ignored the man. The man left and he went to a similar yacht docked at the next slip. A few minutes later, the engines of the adjoining boat fired up and it departed the marina. Upon return, my friend learned that fella who looked like a bum purchased the boat and transferred the cash electronically even while they were on the sea trial. In this case, an interruption turned into an opportunity for a sizable commission for my friend's competition. When we think about our mission and how it can make a difference in this world, then we should consider these interruptions that we all encounter a bit differently. Of course, there are techniques and strategies and protocols that we can put into place to become more efficient and get what we need to do done. But in all this effort to maximize what's best and most productive, Am I really trying to pause to consider the surroundings and the moment that I am in? Don't miss an opportunity that may just be disguised as an interruption. So a couple of takeaway points for today. When you experience interruptions, phone calls, visits from people, emails, demands on your time, remember, other people are important too. Also, other people have wisdom and knowledge that you don't have and that can help you in your personal or corporate mission. And finally, other people can inspire you and enable you in your mission. One of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. He wrote this, The great thing, if one can, is to stop regarding all the unpleasant things as interruptions of one's own or real life. The truth is, of course, that what one calls the interruptions are precisely one's real life, the life God is sending day by day. The next time you want to pull your hair out because you're not accomplishing things due to interruptions, consider the possibility that those very interruptions may be, in fact, exactly what needs to be incorporated into your day's mission. So take a moment. What will your moment for mission be today? This is Fred Boystrang. Thanks for letting me interrupt your day. And have a great day.